the Hornets. Uh, so please give it up for Tim Sutton and Joseph Delage. 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 There it is. I like There's Tim Sutton. Sure. Marble Hornets. It's funny because I, I wrote it down like that too. Yeah. Well, welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Get out! <laughs> there you go. All right. The other two have not joined us in the land of the living. They were stuck in the elevator, right? Mm -hmm. uh, stuck in now. sleep cycle. Oh. <laughs> we'll start with the first question. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Hi, Mary from Connecticut Post. You guys just teased uh, a brand new series that you have coming up, um, pretty like different tones, I guess. Um, was there any specific challenges with their new bad um, events? Could you talk about those a little bit? Uh, <clears throat> the anime that we teased uh, came out of a desire to actually fit in at the anime conventions that we're invited to, because we don't make anime. So we decided we to throw one. Anime. Yeah, now we do. So we made that one for uh, Middle Tennessee Anime Convention, uh, Nashville. Uh, Dog Dog is another animated series that we've wanted to do for a while. Uh, and it was spawned out of just some silly posts that Troy had made on Tumblr. Uh, and that's actually why we brought on our fourth member, Noah, was as an animation specialist to help bring projects like that to life. So now we're starting to see the fruits of their endeavors. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the, the big tease for the serious series that we're doing, it's uh, going to be following up Marble Hornets and everything. That's something that we've been working on the past several months. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it, we've been doing for once actually uh, planned out hard for the, the release of the series. This is actually not tied to it, but there is another something for the people uh, mm -hmm. coming up soon. Uh, as far as challenges for it, I can't really say too much without spoiling things about the new series. I'm sorry. Um, about like working on like different, you know, the comedy stuff or something. I don't think it's really that difficult to do things with different tones just because, you know, I'm not serious and afraid all the time, but I'm also not happy all the time. So yeah. it's it's good to, uh, you know, have something to work on for each one of those different mood swings, I guess. <laughs> Troy Ackerman, BW Media Spotlight. Uh, how would you best describe your work to someone who's never heard of you before? Um... Hmm. So, I guess for someone that's never heard of us before, we would just talk about Marvel Hornets since that's our best known work. Uh, it is a found footage paranormal uh, series on YouTube. Uh, gets likened to paranormal activity quite a bit, but that is actually not <laughs> totally fitting. We started two months before they started their media blitz, and we were like, oh, okay. But it helped us out in the long run. A long time ago. Yep, back in aught nine. Uh, <laughs> but we uh, we did that series for five years, exactly five years actually. To the day. Uh, and uh, spanned three seasons, and we we grew completely through word of mouth. Uh, we never advertised ourselves, uh, with the exception of once, uh, and that was. A mixed bag, so we just said, "Ask for it, word of mouth." It is, and it's worked out pretty well for us so far. Yeah. So, what's it like filming something that's found footage? There, there are more. In some ways, it's easier. In some ways, it's harder because uh, you, uh, you, you know, you still have to make sure you're framing your shots in a way that is interesting, but you almost have to write the camera as a separate character because whenever the camera exists uh, in the world of the story then you have to have a reason for it to be there and 
a way for it to get to the place that you want it to be in order to frame the action in the way that you want it to. So whenever you whenever you are writing your script, you have to account for how someone would be filming this and why. So that's an, an extra little thing that if it was not found footage, you wouldn't really have to think about. It's why why is the camera there? Well, it doesn't matter. It's because that's what we wanted to show. But you know, that's it's that's that's the biggest difference I would say. What was your favorite? Um, probably Marble Hornets because of stuff like this. Yeah. Our, uh, Plus it was an adventure. Yeah. Our, our silly ones will all, always be special to me uh, because it, it started out as a uh, kind of a stress release for when we were doing Marble Hornets because we are very silly people so making serious things all the time is kind of a drag, man. So uh, every once in a while we would just basically have to yeah. make something off the wall and goofy. It's still a little dark, uh, but uh, mostly silly, just so we didn't go crazy. Uh, but I think still Marble Hornets is my favorite. It's the, it's, it was a, quite the endeavor and we finished it and that's something to be proud of. Have we ever done anything that wasn't at least a little dark? I can't really think of much. Really, there's always at least an undertone of despair throughout everything that we do. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you give examples of the silly ones that we did? We have a short called Troy Shaves His Face, uh, which is set to. Uh, some classical music. It's very neat. It's uh, got strong undertones of Ren and Stimpy with the physical comedy and everything. And then at the very end, it's quite a twist. Uh, maybe not the most subtle of twists, but uh, <laughs> but it was fun to do nonetheless. Uh, and uh, we also each have there. We each have a. Um, a small show that's sort of like uh, each each member of the team having their po their own, I guess, public access television character. So he plays a uh, a handyman named uh, oh, Owen Hankinson. Uh, I play a um, a guy, a, a very angry guy who hosts a public access TV show about space named Morningstar Sinclair. Uh, Troy plays. Uh, uh, the incomparable, and, and the incomparable uh, uh, Craig Digsby, who tells us facts about nature, and then uh, Noah plays uh, the, uh, I guess, resident of cyber computer land, computer gym, and the four of those things together, I guess, are sort of like we're able to stretch our stretch our. Uh, Stretch our wings. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, creative I don't know. muscles. Yeah. Stretch our creative yeah. muscles. Because on those particular ones, um, uh, whoever is in front of the camera writes the entire thing, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they direct it, and all everything in one of those shorts is basically the brainchild of whoever is in front of the camera. So that's it's a it's a neat little thing because other people just get to basically be like I'm a tool, use me. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. We're each mini showrunners for a little bit. Uh, I appreciate that. I think it's an important. I just realized that. Um, what? Oh, well, I don't know if it's a When did you guys decide? Hey, let's do a found footage series. Like, what was the re like? Why did you start doing it? Pretty much immediately, and it was out of necessity as much as it was practicality. Or whoa, that's redundant. Uh, <clears throat> it was as much a practical decision as it was a creative one, uh, because at the time the only camera we had available to us was a little Sony Handycam, and we're like, yeah, we could shoot a multicam thing, but it probably wouldn't look the best. So we wanted to play to our strengths. And uh, it just worked out because, uh, you know, the Blair Witch Project had been out uh, and 
well, I mean, it had been out like 10 while, years, yeah. but uh, no one had really been doing anything like it, so it was kind of unique at the time, too. Uh, but that, it was actually, it, like I said, it was a, more of a necessity than anything is why we chose to do it. Uh, and then it just worked for us, so we, we kept doing it. And, and for Marble Hornets, we never switched from it. There are a few times when you can see the film within the film uh, being done, but other than a few Easter eggs we put on the DVD, I don't think we've ever shown shown anything that actually has cutaways. It's all got a very found footage mm -hmm. feel to it. What is your inspiration in Marvel Heart specifically and in pursuing filmmaking uh, in general? So Marvel Hornets was spawned out of this thread on the somethingawful.com forums uh, called Create Paranormal Images uh, thread. And uh, it was basically just showing how easy it is to fake those in images. Uh, and this guy, this user Victor Surge came up with this Photoshop of a guy in a suit and no face. It wasn't even called the Slender Man at the time. The, the goons on the forum were the ones that actually came up with that name and it kind of got retro, retroactively added to his story. Mm -hmm. uh, but for whatever reason, everyone in the thread really latched onto it and people were writing stories and doing photoshops and even some audio logs, but no one had done video yet. And Troy uh, said, well, I am a film student and my mom wants me to get a job but I don't want to, so let's make uh, this YouTube video. So we got together, uh, he, he called me up because I wasn't doing anything, and we, uh, we sat down and we storyboarded basically the entire first season uh, over the course of like nine hours and filmed the first, uh, the first entry and the introduction that night, uh, and then it kind of just, spiraled out of control from there. Um, as far as filmmaking in general, I was actually a music performance major, uh, but I had taken a long time out of high school, and uh, I decided since the university I was going to, I kind of just showed up one day, and I was like, hey, I'm gonna be a uh, music major, and they're like, okay, can you play? And I did, and they're like, all right, cool, you're on board but they never gave me a shot for a scholarship. And I'm like, I'm paying for this out of my pocket, man. Uh, so I was like, I'm not gonna do this for four years. So I switched to TCS, and then I freaking dropped out of that because this started going good. Uh, how about you, Tim? Why filmmaking? Uh, well, I've been interested in filmmaking for years and years and years, uh, all throughout high school. And uh, whenever I started college, I sort of gave up the dream and tried to get a, a regular major, I guess, uh, but it turned out I was bad at all of those. But while I was doing all of that was when we were doing Marble Hornets on the side, and it took me entirely too long to realize, you know, you're, all that film stuff that you wanted to do when you were younger, you're literally doing that right now. So I just dove headlong into that, and I turned around and I changed my major in college to film, and uh, it's now I've just been moving full steam ahead ever since. I wish my story was heartwarming like that. <laughs> Instead, it's I gave up on a dream, man. Yeah. I've always liked doing creative stuff, though. Yeah. So it's still it, creating it, in some way. Yeah, it still fits. Uh, okay. What was the most strenuous part about filming something to you? Uh, I probably the scheduling. It's so, always the scheduling. Uh, just getting stuff together. Hey, guys, are you know? They are. All right. It's Troy and Noah. Hey, guys. Here we go. Good. What, uh, Troy, what was the most strenuous part for you for doing Marble Hornets? I said scheduling. I said stunts. Um, scheduling is probably pretty off the part. Also editing it because it was like uh, um, uh, when I was sitting there editing it, it was like just thinking of like, hey, we're making the official canon thing right now, and that's 
stressful because it's like, man, I hope I don't screw it up. But yeah. So I'm assuming this is mostly your nine to five now. Uh, for the most part. Yeah. Uh, at what point, from switching from whatever your nine to fives were to this, like, what was that moment feeling like? I hope this works. Yeah. yeah. It's scary <laughs> and surreal, but also kind of nice because then I didn't have to wait tables. So. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty good. That was yeah. Getting to quit working at Applebee's was pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was. I got to leave. Uh, being elbow deep in mayonnaise, making coleslaw all day. So that was a nice change. And yeah, there's always a level of like, you have to just go forward with that ambition to like, you want it bad enough. Yeah. And when you do that, it's kind of like, it makes it easy to make the conversion. Like, I don't want to deal with, you know, food anymore. And you want to do what you want to do. But obviously that's always difficult to make it happen too. Yeah. So. But easy to make a decision like that. Cause I just switched, I, last year, I, stop working retail because I got my degree in journalism and switched to becoming a freelancer. Right. And so I'm always interested in talking to other people that have made the switch. Because like I was like I just kind of the same thing. I got fed up and was like, no. Nope. Yes. Yeah. It's always great switching to something you actually want to do. Oh I besides not being a little bit more, but otherwise Oh yeah. Right. Way, way better. Yeah. Right, but the more you do it, you know, the more it expands, the more you're gonna constantly move towards the actual goal. Yeah. Instead of going like, oh it's gonna be great when I can. No, just you know, yeah. before, man. I already asked the uh, first two panelists this question, so I'm gonna ask the two new panelists. Okay. What inspires you to get into Marmal Horror specifically and filmmaking in general? I told the origin story. Yeah. yeah. Um I always, I spent five years in college, but it wasn't because I switched my major or anything. I actually had the same major going through everything because I knew this is what I wanted to do. Um, so I, I remember thinking when I was like 12, I was like, I want to make, I want to make uh, movies or something because that'll probably be pretty easy. <laughs> and, <laughs> Because I wanted to be, I wanted to be an animator at one point. I was like, I want to work for Pixar or something. And uh, then I thought, I'll just make movies because that seems easier. If it's literally what I thought, and it's probably somewhat easier. I don't know. I don't know. They're probably both really hard now that I actually know how to do it. But uh, yeah, the, with the um, uh, origin story, Joseph said, like that's pretty much what we. I trust you didn't say. <laughs> well, I thought everything up and it was all me or something. No. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what I always wanted to do. What about you now? Um, I, I joined the, the team after Marble Hornets, uh, but now that we're working on more productions and all these different multimedia aspects, uh, it, was, it was a fun leap. It was fun joining the team because uh, specifically, um, my background is uh, animation, writing, and voice acting, and I, I've been working multimedia with productions a lot, but I've been doing more corporate side. So I've been working for studios, I've been working that angle, uh, and it's been great. I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, and I still do plan on doing it at some point, but right now I really like the idea of just like having a team where we can work together and kind of collaborate, make something really cool and have that indie side to it. So it's very rewarding. So I would, uh, I would definitely say that from a person who's tried both sides of it, both are rewarding for their own reasons. So, uh, but yeah, no, it's pretty fulfilling. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to take the reins over here. Um, before we let you guys go, I'm, I'm kind of interested. What's been the best cosplay you've seen so this weekend? Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. The whole band? Oh yeah, it was all four of them. They were outside and they had a, a stereo hidden behind their little cardboard drum kit they were playing Sergeant <laughs> Pepper's with. It was pretty, pretty cool. great. I saw this one guy who was, he had stilts on and he had like a nine foot tall like robot suit and up top was a little tiny like green little alien and he took an iPad and he had like footage of like this weird like 3D eye and the 3D eye was in the cardboard box so it actually looked like the little monster who was piloting the so-called robot was literally like looking around the whole time and, uh, and we even asked him like what are you and he goes I'm just Cool sci-fi robot driven by an alien. I'm like, this is great. So yeah, I really liked him. There have been some very dedicated Five Nights at Freddy's cosplays that I've seen. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're all really detailed. Um, yeah. There's actually uh, a couple that have been like across from our booth 
for a lot of the con and their the movements and everything. It's yeah. just the tiniest bit really unsettling. So <laughs> I think my favorite one uh, in that it was dedicated to its low budget, I guess, was the Cyberman from Doctor Who I saw oh, when you were that when you weren't there yesterday, Tim. Like Tim is the one of us who like, really likes Doctor Who, but I know I know the Cyberman and, and it looked like it was the older like Probably made the exact same way that they were back probably. in the, like you know sixties or whatever. It was just like almost just wrapped in tin foil, <laughs> and then just like the little Cyberman head with like a and the big camera flash bulb and yeah, everything. Yeah. Uh, and so besides the exhibit hall, where else can we find you guys today? That's actually where we're going to be spending all of our time today. We right. finished up our panels yesterday, so we're just going to be hanging out with uh, fans, doing autographs, and yep. taking pictures and stuff. Love it. All right, let's give it up for Marble Hornets, the, all the Marble Hornets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Joseph Delage. Delage. Ah, oh, I tried. You can mess with my pilot. like this so much easier to do. I mean, there are projects getting thrown together with people who have never met each other in person. In fact, we didn't meet each other in person until 2009 at a convention, so. I think that's the best, that's the best reason to come back because I think, oddly enough, I think you're doing your fans a disservice if you come back and you don't want to or you're forcing it because then you're sort of giving them your table scratch.